So we gotta talk about the best exercise for losing weight. I know so many of you that are building fasting lifestyles, you're trying to figure out how to lose weight. And um, I've done a lot of videos on all the different ways you can pair fasting with different diet styles to lose weight. So go watch those if you're deep on a weight loss reduction journey. Um, there really is a lot of science behind weight loss. And I think that's important for us all to acknowledge. Um, I know that the, uh, for me, Back in the 1970s and 80s when I was growing up, the old theory was if you wanted to lose weight, you just diet, you'd reduce calories down and you worked out harder. And a lot of people are still, still using that theory and that is the hardest way to drop weight and many times actually will have you boomerang back. So on this video, I wanna highlight one study in particular that really shows the effectiveness of one style of exercise that will, not only will you be able to succeed at, because everybody can do this, but also that will give you a greater burn when it comes to fat loss and will improve your cardiovascular system the best. And it's time efficient. Here we go. The study I'm highlighting was actually in BMJ, British Medical Journal, which is a phenomenal journal. Um, and the title of the study is The Effectiveness of High Intensity Interval Training for Weight Loss in Adults with Obesity. Now, high intensity training, if you have not heard about this, let me give you sort of the basic premise of it. What it is, is where you are pushing yourself to max for about 30 seconds, and then you're taking a rest for 90 seconds, and then you're going back and pushing yourself to a max for 30 seconds. So this was originally brought to our attention decades ago by a Japanese scientist named Tabata. You might've heard of Tabata training. That was like all the rage in all the gyms for a long time. And what he did is he took two groups. This was, this was the old study. This is a new one. So I'm don't worry, I'm getting to the new study. But in the old study, what Tabata uh, uh, figured out was that you could take two groups of people. One, you could put them on a treadmill uh, running or walking at the same rate for an hour. And the other one, he had do 30 seconds of full out hard running on the treadmill, followed by 90 seconds of walking, then back to 30 seconds and then 90 seconds. And he had them do that for 20 minutes. Now, what he found in that study was that the people who were on the treadmill for an hour, yes, they burned calories, but the minute they got off that treadmill, they no longer were burning, had any kind of metabolic uptick. There was nothing that kept their metabolism at that really high burn rate. Whereas the people, when he put them on the treadmill and he made them go all out where they could barely you know, move anymore, and this showed up in this study too, and then he had them do that in short bursts, that not only did their metabolic rate go up during the 20 minute exercise, but it stayed high for 24 hours. Now this is critical because I don't know about you, but I want an exercise that's gonna be short bursts, 20 minutes, very doable. Um, and yeah, I'd like it to keep my metabolic rate going for the rest of the day, wouldn't you? So this is why HIIT training, this style of training has become so popular because it is the most time efficient way to use exercise to drop weight. Now, what's interesting about this new study in BMJ, so it's not like completely new, it's 2021, but what they did is that they looked at 44 obese subjects. Now, it was a variation of men and women, so I just wanna point out um, that we should have had it for my women, like it should have been all on women so that we could really see what this did, take the information for women out of this. But because we don't study women in a silo, we gotta mix women in with men, we're sort of giving, getting an uh, average of the findings for both men and women. They compared one that was 60% of maximum oxygen peak, or what they call VO2 peak. And so that wouldn't be like full on out of breath. That would be like 60% of, of your ultimate limit that you can take cardiovascularly. That, that was one type of working out. They called it MICT. And then the other group did HIIT training where you are going a 100% of VO2 max. So you are like, you gotta be out of breath. If you're gonna play by these rules, you when you work out, you gotta be out of breath, deal? Okay, now check this out. So with this HIIT style of HIIT training, they shortened it even more. They changed the parameters a little more. 
compared to the old Tabatas information. They did three to seven repetitions of a three minute all out. So instead of a 30 second sprint, they did three minutes all out. So I guess that would still be around a 20 minute workout if you did seven repetitions of three minutes all out at 100%. And then they did a, one, a, a minute and a half rest in between each repetition. So if you want to if you want to mimic this, it's a little different version from Tabatis. So I just want to point that out. Now, here's what they found is that they did it every day for 12 weeks. And at the end of a 12 week period, not only did the HIIT training group lose more weight, but their cardiovascular system was greatly improved. So they started to see some real reduction in poor cardio cardiovascular health turn around from the HIIT training that they didn't see from people who were just doing the moderate training at about 60% of their VO2 max. So that was really cool. The second thing that they saw was that because it was such a short type of exercise that they were able, people were able to stick with it. So there was no boredom. The dropout rate was, was significantly lower than the people who had to go longer with their exercise, but maybe were more comfortable in the exercise experience. So again, if we relate this to our own selves, would you rather go for an hour walk and because it feels a little bit easier or would you take 20 minutes of some struggle and, and, and so that you can get a better result? Now I can tell you as somebody who's very uh, packed, her calendar is very packed, I'll take 20 minutes um, of struggle over an hour of comfort to get a better fitness result. That's just hands down, that's, that's how I feel. So I think when we get to this place where we're like, I can't exercise because I don't have time. This blows this completely away. Now, what I love about this study, and I, and I want to really highlight, because sometimes these studies can be very confusing, and sometimes they have just gems of statements that I'm like, wow, we got to know this. And here's one of the gems of a statement that they said, is that they feel like HIIT training should be considered for improving not just weight loss, but it could be, should be considered for improving cardiovascular vascular markers and that it actually should be one of our first go-tos for cardiovascular health. Now let's, let's unpack that for a hot moment. Cause I know you probably came to this video because you want to lose weight. So hopefully you just got an understanding that the new science is saying three minutes on minute and a half uh, reduction, three minutes of all out minute and a half of rest that done three to seven times is how you are going to burn more fat and how you are going to improve cardiovascular markers. I hope that everybody starts exercising like that because that is the key for weight loss. But what about for treatment of cardiovascular markers? So those of you that have high blood pressure, those of you that have high cholesterol, those of you that are not sure if you want to take a statin or if you're not sure, you know, what you're doing for your cardiovascular health, there, there's another part of the cardiovascular story that might not be, you may have never heard of, which is this high intensity training for overall cardiovascular improvement along with weight loss. And I, the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to highlight that for you is because when I am here educating you all, my, I'm looking at it through a lifestyle lens. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. If we have gained weight, if we have high blood pressure, if we have high cholesterol, if we have challenges with our cardiovascular system, um, I always think about lifestyle first. And of course, the fasting lifestyle cleans up so much. And just like fasting, when I brought it to you, it's like all of a sudden people were like, oh wow, I can eat my food in an eight to 10 hour period, leaving longer windows for um, rest. And my body starts to actually burn fat more efficiently. It's the same principle I'm talking about now, but it's over in the exercise world. We can exercise more efficiently and get a better result. So we're back at the metabolic switch. You go into that fasted state, you burn fat. You come into the food state and you start to build hormones and you start to, to improve everything from neurotransmitters in your brain, to your hair, to your skin, to muscle. We do that, right? In the metabolic state or in the sugar burner state. Then we go over to the 
fat burning state, we start fasting a little longer. We start really getting rid of the excess. We can do the same with exercise. Think of HIIT training as being over here in the fat burning place. So if you like to walk or you like to go with a hike with friends or you like your yoga class, keep doing that. But when you want to dip into periods of more fat burning, how about we do this three minutes on, minute and a half off, three to seven reps, and we do HIIT training over here. That's how I see this tool being used. Weight loss is not complicated when you start to look at it through the lens of the metabolic switch. And if you want to be a fat burner when it comes to exercise, HIIT training is your go-to. So put in the comments if that is you, if you've noticed HIIT training has helped you lose weight. If you're struggling to understand what HIIT training even is, come join me in my Reset Academy. Every Saturday morning, we're doing different versions of HIIT training. All ages are in there. Let me tell you, it's a really fun community and there's a lot, everything from 80 year olds to 25 year olds, we're all working out together all over the world. So if you want to experience this, come join us over there. Um, but don't, don't give up on yourself. Don't feel, fall prey to those old dieting strategies, those old exercise strategies. They're no longer pertinent anymore. They're no longer relevant. And if you didn't get the message, let's, this is the message. Send this to somebody who's exercising in a way that's just exhausting them, not turning them into a great metabolic switcher and not tapping into the fat burning uh, resources that your body's already given you. So there you go. Hit training. It's the jam for weight loss. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna to help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state